Have you ever gone to a concert from a smaller artist and when you saw them perform on stage in the charisma and stage presence and songs that they had, you thought they're going to be big one day? Because this happened to me last week when I went to see Conan Gray in concert, as well as his opener, Maisie Peters, who I both think have the potential to be really big and are definitely singers to watch in the upcoming years. This year, we've seen artists like Sabrina Carpenter and Chapel Roan skyrocket into fame after releasing music for many years, but not necessarily having a lot of critical acclaim or chart success or album sales. This has got me thinking, who is the next singer who might have their own espresso moment? So let me give some background first on Conan Gray. This tour is his tour for his third album, Found Heaven. I actually used to watch Conan Gray when he used to be a YouTuber. He would make very vlog, art, cozy content. He was kind of the quintessential art ho. I could make a whole video about the art hoes, but he encapsulated the art ho movement very well and his videos were really cute and cozy. He made videos where he'd like bake banana bread with his friends and I always thought if I was a YouTuber I would love to do videos like this that are so like fun and sweet. But once he started to release music I was like I don't really care because a lot of vloggers were releasing music at that time and I was like whatever I don't care about your music. Which I feel bad about now because later I became a fan which is kind of ironic. In 2018 he released his first EP Sunset Season. And then he would follow it up, releasing his debut album, Kid Crow, which had some somewhat viral songs like Wish You Were Sober, Maniac, and Heather. Heather is Conan's most well-known song. It's about him pining for someone who's in love with someone else. And the song was really big on social media. It is actually one of the songs on Spotify that has over a billion streams, which is a pretty small group of under 800 songs. He would write all of his own songs, and his confessional, vulnerable style lyrics were inspired by Taylor Swift and Lord. In his albums, he explores heartbreak, family trauma, and friendships. He was also praised by Elton John, and me and Elton John have the same music taste. It's been a, a, a summer and a year of the, the great female uh, singers and songwriters, Sabrina Carpenter, Chapel Roan, Billie Eilish, Taylor Swift, Olivia Rodrigo, Charlie XCX, Gracie Abrams. They've just ruled it. And for his debut EP and first two albums, he would be working with Dan Nigro, who famously is also the producer that works with Olivia Rodrigo and Chapel Roan. Conan is also BFFs with Olivia Rodrigo. And I think the two of them have done a pretty good job staying out of drama and keeping their head down and just working because I feel like a lot of Swifties are after them. I know some people call them like evil twins and stuff on Stan Twitter, but I feel like they've done a good job not engaging with the drama. And his second album, Super Ache, released in 2022, built upon Kid Crow and I think is his strongest album so far. It explores the themes I talked about in the first album in a really beautiful but heartbreaking way, and there's even beauty to the sadness. I think standouts are people watching Family Line and Memories. For example, some of his lyrics on people watching is, that wasn't funny, but she laughed so hard she almost cried. They're counting months they've been together, almost 49. He's making fun about how she acted around the holidays. She wears a ring, but they tell people that they're not engaged. They met in class for metaphysical philosophy. He tells his friends, I like her because she's so much smarter than me. They're having talks about their futures until 4 a.m. And I'm happy for them. Or in Family Line, he said, Scattered across my family lines, I'm so good at telling lies. That came from my mother's side. Told a million to survive. Scattered across my family lines. God, I have my father's eyes. But my sisters, when I cry, I can run, but I can't hide from my family line. Or in Memories, I wish that you would stay in my memories, but you show up today just to ruin things. I want to put you in the past because I'm traumatized, but you're not letting me do that. Because tonight, you're all drunk in my kitchen, curled in the fetal position, too busy playing the victim to be listening to me when I say, I wish that you would stay in my memories. Conan's third album, Found Heaven, would depart from this pop style a little bit and lean more into synth pop 80s inspired music. He would work with Swedish producers Max Martin and... Oscar Holter. Max Martin needs no introduction, the biggest pop producer of all time probably. 
Some of the highlights off this album to me are Killing Me, Winner, and Bourgeoisie's. I haven't listened to all of Conan's songs, but Wish You Were a Sober, Maniac, Disaster, and Neverending Song have found their way into a lot of my playlists. Conan has also become pretty known for his gender non-conforming style, sometimes wearing dresses and flamboyant costuming. And for this tour, he wore this leather ensemble. I've actually been going to a lot of concerts recently. I saw in like late summer, early fall, I saw Lizzie McAlpine, Gracie Abrams, and Conan Gray at the same venue. And out of those three shows, I did enjoy the Conan show the most. And I loved the lighting design. I was really impressed. I loved the star. It was pretty simple, but it still was really impactful and pretty to look at. And there was like lasers going off and a lot of flashing lights. It was really pretty though. I was really excited that he sung Wish You Were Sober, People Watching, and Memories were probably my favorite songs to see live. Oh, maniac. A lot of the songs were pretty recognizable or I could catch on to the chorus and sing along. He did a lot of like the sing it, especially for the choruses and some of them like... I was actually like, I kind of know the melody, but I actually don't know what he's saying here. I was like, Conan, I need your help. I know some people don't really like that when artists do that, but I do think it gets the crowd like more engaged and people want to scream the lyrics more. I also realized during the show, I started thinking more about how a lot of his songs deal with his family trauma and his relationship with his family. And I was like, I really hope he's healed from all of this. He gave a sweet intro into one of his songs talking about how he went through a period where he felt like maybe there was nothing to live for anymore, but he made it through. He also sung an unreleased song, Holidays, which I guess is actually coming out this Friday. I do also want to say he does have a really great singing voice, and it was actually enjoyable to hear some of his older songs, like Heather sung because I think his singing is improved, so it sounded even better than I feel like the recordings did of some of his songs, his older songs especially. He did the classic fake out encore thing, which I guess I'm kind of over because no one really does it in a way that's believable. Like he just sung memories and then just like walked off the stage and waved and I was like, if that was an actual end of the concert, that'd be like so unprofessional. No like, my, here's my band, applaud, you know, bow or whatever. He just like walked off the stage. But it's really just time, I guess, to give him a costume change. But at the end of the show, for the encore, he sung Bourgeoisie's Maniac and Alley Rose. So that was a great ending to the show. Especially Maniac's one of my favorite Conan songs. I really think I wouldn't be surprised if in a couple years he has a hit song or a hit album. And the costuming especially like reminds me of David Bowie or Elton John. And I feel like they really paved the way for like more extravagant, flamboyant um, costumes for male artists. And it's exciting to see Conan following in their footsteps. And for the opener, we have Maisie Peters. I feel like it's Maisie, but I want to say Macy. But I'm pretty sure it's Maisie. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Who also is a great up-and-coming pop singer who I feel like will also have a really big successful career. She started off releasing acoustic folk pop music and she started posting on her YouTube in 2015 singing songs and covers. She actually mentioned during the show that her and Conan met when they were both posting on YouTube in the early days and she first released music in the summer of 2017 independently but soon signed to Atlantic Records in the UK and released two EPs under Atlantic. But in June of 2021 she would sign to Ed Sheeran's label Gingerbread Man Records. Macy was often kind of called like the protege of Ed Sheeran, like because of their similar styling. She's also one of the only people signed to his record label. And then she would release You Signed Up For This, her debut album in August of 2021, which would feature singles John Hughes' movie and Psycho, and my personal favorite song off the album, I'm Trying, in parentheses, Not Friends. I think Macy does a great job of writing in some kind of funny, cheeky lyrics into her song. Like, for example, in this song, she says, Three shots, lemon drops, one for being lost and alone in your early 20s, one for being obsessed with someone who puts you secondary, one for calling guys with guitars in a cemetery, just me, okay. Or, got friends, got at least a healthy five, yeah, some people think I'm funny, baby, don't look so surprised. 
We think that your girlfriend is a bore, but we're nice to her in public because we're grown up and mature. This song is just really funny and really fun. And this is the song that I became a fan off of after listening to this. I also do like Psycho a lot. That's a good one too. She would open for Ed Sheeran on his plus minus equals division times tour. I want to know if you're an Ed Sheeran fan, do you like his math situ <laughs> situation going on? And while on tour, Macy would switch her musical direction quite a bit and start releasing more pop rock music like Kate's Brother, Blonde, and Not Another Rock Star three bangers. This is when I really became a Macy fan and got excited to see her in concert because in June of 2023, she'd release her second studio album, The Good Witch, which would be her first album to debut at number one on the UK chart. And this album is probably one of my favorite albums of 2023. I actually looked at my Spotify stats and it's my most listened to album of last year. So I feel like I can't understate how much I love this album. And this album has a great mixture of pop songs, but also ballads. There It Goes and History of Man are definitely standouts that have become viral at different times. There It Goes, I used to drive to work every day and like practice singing it. A new home, a swan dive, a blank page, a rewrite, a black cat in the streetlight, an open door, the come down of closure, the girls and I do yoga, I wake up and it's October, the loss is yours. Brick Lane and the brisk cold and red wine on its hip bone, the witch and hours of Stockholm that you won't see sunflowers in the kitchen a heartbreak and remission the universe is shifting and it's all for me all for me i did that to beat the ai allegations and it was weird because when macy sung that live i was like whoa i know all these lyrics but also i was like there's no better place to sing this than with her because she wrote this song <laughs> and she and these people in the crowd who are singing it with me are like the only people who know the feeling that I know about being attached to the song and that feeling of like closure and overcoming. So I was really glad I got to see that song live. I'm excited for the people who are hearing it for the first time now, like who are Conan fans or from anything else, maybe this video. Hopefully I'll make some Macy fan converts <laughs> because I think she's really talented and I love her songwriting and she has great stage presence too. And I love how like into the rock elements of the show she gets into like when the, I don't want to say the beat drops because I don't know if that applies to rock, but like when the rock, when the beat drops, yeah, she like does these crazy like kicks and you want to enjoy the show as much as she's enjoying it running around on the stage. And another highlight of the show for me was her singing the band and I which is a really great song about her going on tour around America she talks about her different bandmates and the different stops she made and where we saw the show was referenced in the song so that was really fun to hear also and she was very nice about our city and she's very complimentary and it made me feel like oh she does like it here well I mean she put it in the song <laughs> but it made me feel like I was kind of a part of what she was building because I was at her I mean I wasn't at her first tour that I guess she would have written the song about but I saw her last year at a pretty small venue and Macy does a really good job of like speaking to the Gen Z experience and being kind of playful and fun and snarky in her lyrics but also sincere like the history of man a song about the emotional burden that women take on throughout history is really beautiful and it's very introspective also wendy is a really great song there must be like a wendy peter matt like wendy the macy peter song and then peter the taylor swift song i kind of feel like they're like parts of each other i'd love for someone to make a mashup of those two songs i wonder if someone's already done that macy is also a big fan of taylor swift and she's talked about taylor swift inspiring her songwriting a lot and while Taylor was on tour on the Eras tour and she she performed at Wembley Stadium. Maisie was one of the openers she had because she had, I believe, different openers every day for her England stops of the tour. And I thought this was pretty iconic because in Guy on a Horse, she says, cute your car is sports. Like, is that fast? I hear you talking over me. Like, is that smart? Because I played Wembley Stadium. Like, is that hard? Not really. Guy on a Horse is also a great sassy song where she's putting a guy in his place. Because she's Joan of Arc and you're just a guy on a horse. And I hope Macy has... Sorry, Maisie. <laughs> and I hope Maisie has a really successful career and I look forward to hearing new music because I love The Good Witch so much and I also love the deluxe songs that she added to The Good Witch. They're also great songs. Holy Revival. They're all good, actually. <laughs> 
and I know some people online like clown on Macy for her lyrics being a little bit too like cheesy, but I'm totally okay with whatever cheesiness is perceived. It's authentic to her and it's fun and it's cute. It's fun to sing along to. I actually also want to hear if there are any other smaller artists that you could see becoming big in the near future or if you ever saw a smaller artist that then blew up. I do want to clarify that I know I'm calling Macy and Conan smaller artists, but I don't mean to diminish the amount of success that they've achieved in their career in any way. Like, they've both had great careers, gone on great tours, released great music. I just mean they've never had, like, a global supportive movement behind them like Sabrina and Chapel are having where they're getting Grammy nominations and number one on the Hot 100s, number one albums, like that kind of success. And I'm not even saying that awards and accolades and breaking records is necessary for artists to have successful careers. I mean, I'll keep listening to them even if their music doesn't chart, but it would be nice for them to be commercially recognized and universally recognized. If you guys do have any artists that you think are up and coming, and if you're a fan of Maisie or Conan, what you think... And I'm really hoping, I don't have tickets for any of these shows, but I am really hoping to maybe see the Charlie XCX Troy Savon tour, the Sabrina Carpenter tour, and the Billie Eilish, but I think I'm going to try to buy day of tickets for all those shows because I really want cheap tickets. So send me luck. Anyway, thanks for listening and let me know if you agree. Don't let me know if you disagree. I don't want to know, but let me know what other artists that you think are going to have their big moment. Bye.